Hey guys, welcome back to Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass. My name is Helium Lemon 15. It's 2.45 p.m. on Wednesday, October 4th. And I was just like, we haven't recorded this game in a while, so I was like, might as well get back on, get the ball rolling again with this game instead of keeping the ball stopped. Uh, which we don't like balls when they stop. No, we like Newton and his rules of motion or whatever. New Newton's third law, is that right? Roland, this place is normally pretty low-key, but all the weirdos show up when Ella sings. You better be on your best behavior. I'm, you know, a real-life knight. Or I was. I guess I'm just a bouncer now. I like how he looks like he's wearing very big, like, diapers or underpants or whatever. It looks kind of, or like, what does sumos wear? Um, this information guy, he's eating a banana. That's actually somewhat, uh, relevant to the lore, but I can't say anything more than that. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be a complete spoiler. That That's very late game. Boozy, like Boozy and Hawks? Or booze, like booze. Maybe it's a pun on both. Why did I stammer when I said both? I was like, b-both. I have, yeah, I have like a... I think I have, like, an undiagnosed stutter that, um, I just have to pause while I speak. Sometimes I have to start words a couple times over, just because there's, like, a mismatch between what I hear in my head and my facial muscles. I don't know. I don't know the, um, the medical, medical, uh, reasons that people have stutters. Dale? Who's Dale? Is Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks? Who knows who? how I ended up as a, a Let's Player? Um, I mean, I've gotten much more comfortable just, like, speaking in public, I guess. Uh, I've gotten over some of my shyness from, um, from doing this let's play and just talking off of the top of my head and filibustering. Filibuster vigilantly, my name is Blue Canary, one that's spelled L-I-T-E. My story's infinite, like a launching symphonette, it doesn't rest. Blue Canary in the other by the light switch, who watches over you? Make a little birdhouse in your soul, not to put too fine a point on it, say I'm the only bee in your bonnet. Make a little birdhouse in your soul While you're at it, leaving that light on inside the birdhouse in your soul I don't really know what just happened there uh, Ella and Frank look like they had a fight or something uh, But now this door is open But we still can't go through <laughs> Well, obviously not if we're a kid um, If we're a kid, we obviously can't get a drink If we try to get into enter the ladies room if we try to enter the men's room ah uh, here we go something going on in the bathrooms where all the cool kids are hanging out Jocko like Jocko Pistorius one of my favorite bassists Satch like Satchmo aka Louis Armstrong the great trumpet player Remo I hate to say, I don't know who Remo is. Well, Remo is a drum brand. That's, it's not who, it's what. I mean, I'm sure it was a person who started the Remo brand. And my grandpa's a drummer. I ought to know drum brands. Yeah. Because they have Roland, Ludwig, Remo, all references to drum bands in this, in this game. It's how I think, how you know that uh, Casey Ozemi is probably a musician. I mean, he wrote the whole soundtrack to this game and it's amazing. Especially one with ice for a hot. So there's the rest of the band. I feel like this whole section is kind of like a reference to, um, like the Runaway Guys in Earthbound. Is that what their name is? Like the Blues Brothers, basically, but in Earthbound. Keep your cool, kid. Okay, well, what do I do while I wait for the gig to start? I used to sing a little in college, you know? Helga and the Phantoms. I'd love to go on stage again someday. It looks like the show's about to start. Want to have a seat? Yeah, why not? 
Yeah, it's basically, it's an Earthbound reference. I mean, this whole game is a tribute to Earthbound, so. The wrong place. Jimmy feels something brush against his leg. That sounded bad. Oh my god. Nobody move! It's Mr. Ludwig here. If there's a case that needs solving, I'm the man to solve it. And right now it looks like we've got ourselves a case. A big one. Starts with a capital M. M for what? Oh, we're murder. Well, this is just a mess. It looks like this mysterious sailor has been put through the ringer. That's a euphemism. No point in sugarcoating this. He's all tore up. He's been ripped apart. His guts are all over the place. Maybe I've been doing this gig too long. I've gotten too cynical. But I'm mainly sorry for Boozy here. It's gonna take a hell of a deep cleaning before this carpet's not all gross. Not so fast, toots. Where are you? Oh, it's, it's still him. I didn't sign up for a night like this, Ludwig. Yeah, well, neither did I. But I've got a dead sailor in front of me and a hell of a mess to clean up, so you're staying right here. You're all staying right here. Wanna know why? You're all suspects. That's right, all of you, including you, dame. I've got my eye on everyone here. That stuffed bear, watching you. Weird guy with a fishbowl for a hat. <laughs> that creepy quiet kid. You better believe I'm watching you. Nobody's leaving this building till the murder's solved. End of story. So why does the sailor look exactly like Jimmy? It's a mystery. I think it's a mystery, anyway. This whole thing's a mystery. There are mysteries within mysteries. Mystery layers. Like, um... J.J. Abrams and his philosophy of the mystery box, which is a somewhat controversial... Find yourself a new chew toy. I need a drink. I can't do a low voice very well. All right, now that the distractions are out of the way, it's time to get down to business. When I was a kid, I used to love listening to um, Prairie Home Companion with my parents, and there was that section with. Um, Guy Noir, Private Eye. Um, okay. And the thing is, Aquarium Companion had, uh, uh, Fred Newman, the sound effects guy from, uh, Between the Lions, and Between the Lions was one of my favorite shows. Like, absolute favorite shows as a kid. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's a running joke. Something always, something bad always happens to Information Guy. But there are, like, hundreds and hundreds of Information Guys. So. <sighs> and, of course, the joke here is he's reacting to the table, not to the dead person. Art is Information Guy even a person. Oh, wow. So 
So, yeah, let's talk to everyone. Timothy Mouse. Oh dear, Jimmy, something dangerous is going on. I've never felt so scared before. If I get attacked next, you'll protect me, right? Everyone's upset. It's just a little blood. We can still have a good time if you use our imaginations. Jonathan Bear is creepy. Anyway, you'll get much creepier, uh, but that's a spoiler. Another lost crewmate. I don't know how the captain keeps it together. Well, I guess that's why he's the captain. I'll get Manny to help with writing a letter to Jorgen's folks. She's good with languages. Well, that certainly put a damper on the evening. Come to think of it, this club is quite froggy indeed. Seeing Henry was nice, but I'm very much looking forward to going somewhere marvelous. I need practice with my accents. I just feel like certain, like, I don't know, palatal fricative, not even fricatives, just like palatal things I need to work on. Like, really dissect language. Oh, it, it's not my fault if I watch scary movies. Clues are all around you, kid. You just gotta know what to look for. Give me some time to work through this. I'll crack the case. That's my, like, 1930s, uh... You know what I mean. I'm not even gonna finish that sentence because it was stupid to begin with. Or, um... It's that one, uh... Gangster leader from Jim Henson's Dog City. Um, Jim Henson's Dog City is hilarious. It's not one of his most well-known works. But, um... Oh, you and your alcohol. This is a travesty! My busiest day in years, and this happens. My brother was right. I never should have left Legato. Don't say that, Jocko. You're the best bassist I have ever played with. Everything will be alright, you'll see. And information goes down. Where is he? Duh, duh, duh. Poor Jorgen. Actually, I'm not too shook up about him. I lose crewmates all the time on the high seas. It's just part of adventuring. Jorgen had only been with us a short while. I'll remember him as a quiet guy who did his own thing. One time I asked him to pass me the bottle and he stared at me for five solid minutes. It was just because... <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> well, he couldn't speak English as far as I could tell, so I didn't hold it against him. Still, that cornbread was super dry and I almost choked. Stuff's always been bad in this godforsaken town, but it just got worse. When this is all over, we've got to find a new club and a new town. That's right, Ella. We're getting out of this one horse town. You're gonna be the biggest star in the world. If anyone comes after Ella, I'll clock him. Well, we gotta check the bathroom. The urinal. The vent. Gregory. Gregory, you got a vent. Can we go in the toilet as I don't know, a blob? Toilet humor. Ha 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 ha. Inevitable toilet humor. Just like the facts of life. Death, taxes, and kids' movies these days are always gonna have toilet humor. It's just unavoidable. I, did I not look at everything? I thought I looked at everything. have I not talked to? Oh, Buck. I haven't talked to Buck. I don't like this. Not one bit. I don't have a good voice for Buck. Whatever killed those guys is still here. Did you hear it running around in the dark? Don't wander too far away from me. Okay, that was everybody. Alright, everyone gather around. This case is as good as solved. Everyone here? Good. Before I get into accusations, let's go over the clues I've used to reach my conclusion. Clue number one, the bodies. They're all torn up. I mean, look at them. Blood is everywhere. Guts are missing. Even the bones have been gnawed on. This wasn't the work of some noodle-armed frog with a derringer. This was done by a real brute. Clue number two, the number of victims. Since there was a second killing, that must mean that the first victim wasn't the intended one. 
So who was the intended victim? Who knows? It's pitch black at the time of the murder. As far as we know, the intended victim might still be among us. Among us. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. The murder has a flagrant disregard for tables. Possibly all furniture. I'm not sure how that piece fits into the puzzle yet. Probably should have kept that one to myself, to be honest. Clue number four. This is the big one. This is a clue that's going to bust this case wide open. All right. Let's hear it. Clue number four. What is it? Are you ready for it? The light switch. Both of the murders took place in total darkness. Since there's only one light switch, the murderer would have had to have access to it prior to each killing. As you all know, when the first murder took place, almost everyone was in the room listening to Ella sing. However, one person was absent. That person would have never had access to the light switch. That person was turned off the lights. That person would have ripped the poor victim apart with his bare hands. That person is none other than... You, Frank. What? Don't try to deny it, Frank. Everyone knows you're the local lowlife. A real thug. Okay, now I'll do my thug voice for him. This is just the next step in your life of crime. It's true that I did all that bad stuff, but I didn't do no murders. Can it, Frank? You're going away for a long, long time. No! Wait, what about... What about this guy? I was nowhere near the light switch when he got killed. I'm glad you asked. Here's what I think happened. At the time of the first murder, Frank was waiting for his moment in the bathroom. At the end of Ella's song, he jumped out, turned off the lights, and proceeded to beat the first victim moistlessly. He then ran back, turned the lights on, and snuck back into the bathroom to clean up amidst the confusion. After washing away the evidence, he returned and took a seat at the bar, where he was during the second moida. As you all know, the second moida happened very quickly. It would have been impossible to Frank to have run across the room, turned the lights off, murdered the second victim, and run back without us noticing. As it so happens, the second person left the room prior to the second murder. Remember? I do. It's none other than your accomplice, Miss Dale. Not Dale. My sister wouldn't hurt a fly. That may be true, Miss Ella, but would she let her boy toy do the killing for her? It's my suggestion that Miss Dale turned the light off while Frank quickly dispatched the second victim. Now that all that's left is to arrest both murderers. Eep! Miss Dale! Probably just some kind of distracting tactic. Everyone pile into the woman's restroom. Um, it's official police business, so it's not weird. Well, you heard the detective. Let's see what the hubbub is about. My tummy hurts. I've got kind of a tummy ache, and I'm not afraid to admit it. God gives his strongest battles to his silliest warriors, or something like that. I'll follow you. Oh, okay, a long cutscene where he's just walking and the camera isn't even following him. Second worst gig I've ever played. Well, at least it's not the Blues Brothers, you know, where they're, uh, getting glass bottles thrown at them for not playing country music. And then even if they, even when they start playing country music, they start, they keep throwing the bottles at them. Wait a sec- oh, no, 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 we're going over here into the utility room. My voice is kind of tired, so... We can't save. Well, I'll cut the episode here anyway, and I'll, like, drink some water or something. Thank you for watching Jimmy and the Pulsating Mask. Goodbye.